Welcome to part four of making this needle felted Jack Russell Terrier. In this last portion, we're gonna be focusing on making the feet and the ears and the nose. So I'm adding white wool to fill out the paw shape. Right now I'm not working on toes or anything specific, just adding the white wool so that I have something to start from. And then I'll move on to shaping the foot and creating all the little toes and paw pads. Here I'm adding a little bit of definition to the ankle and heel region of the dog. To start shaping the paw pads, I took some black wool and rolled very small pieces into tiny little balls that then I will felt in place to begin creating the shape of the paw pads. Thank you. 
I'm also shaping in between the toes a little bit at this point so that there starts to be definition of each toe. And this is definitely um, a part that you want to be really careful about poking your fingers with the needle. If you have finger guards and you want to use those, that might be helpful. Um, otherwise, just really take your time. I know this video looks like I'm going so fast, but again, this is sped up and I'm going very slow and careful at this point. I'm going to add the last little details to the front paw. These are not present on the hind legs unless you are making a dog that does have a dew claw on its hind leg. So the dew claw is this one right here. A lot of dogs do have their dew claw on the front leg and some dogs have it on the hind leg. So this would be the one that you would add to the hind legs if the dog that you're making has dew claws on the hind legs. Otherwise, the hind feet will not have that. So this is the finished paw pad arrangement for the front paw, and I'm gonna repeat that on the raised paw and then just do a basic paw on the hind feet. I didn't record the paw pads on the hind feet or the other front foot but it was done just the exact same way as the first front foot. And again, these little details that I'm adding in right now are only on the front feet. I'm gonna to try to make all the toes have the same definition. So the front foot needs a little bit more. I'm just needle felting in between the toes to make it appear that there are separations between each toe. Here I'm going to add a little bit of white back to the front of this paw because as I was felting the black paw pad, some of the black wool was starting to show through on the front of this toe. So I'm just filling that back in with the white.
And this is also a way to get more definition between each toe. If it's difficult to just needle felt a crease between the toes and it's not working, then just add little bits of white to build up the toe. Making the paws with this level of detail can be really time consuming and it could be frustrating, especially if you're pretty new to needle felting. So do not feel like you have to do it that way. You could leave it a very simple round paw, not even put paw pads, or you could just add a little bit of color for some paw pads, or you could even take little strips of wool and lay it on the top of the paw to make it look like it's uh, a separation between the toes without really worrying too much about creating a, a separation. Now I'm gonna start working on the ears. So I took a piece of the brown wool and I'm going to fold it over on itself twice to make a little bit of a triangle shape. I'm taking this felting pen that has three needles and just starting to make a basic triangle shape on the felting pad. This does get stuck into the felting pad, but you just kind of pull it out. You can flip it over and work on it again. It's a sponge sometimes <laughs> gets stuck in it. I put it on this more dense foam pad that I have just so that I could get the edges to start getting a little more tightly felted without being stuck into the felting pad, but it honestly is a lot more difficult to work with because the needles can't go as far in that other little white foam thing. As I felt this ear, I keep checking it on the dog's head to see if it's coming out the way that I need it to be. And then I just keep editing it and checking and it's kind of a slow process. And I can't exactly explain what I'm looking for other than I do have a reference dog that I'm looking at and I try to just keep comparing it to that. And if this dog that you're making has upright ears, you would just be worrying about attaching it at the corners and making sure that the ear looks the right size. If it is a folded ear, it's just a little extra step. So you're still gonna make this triangular ear shape, but then you're gonna work on folding it. And the way that the dog holds its ear depends on, I guess, its level of alertness or rest so depending on the look you're trying to go for you just want to keep comparing to your reference and then place the ear in place so this little dog it's going to have a little bit of a divot in the middle right here and then i want it to be high enough on the outer edges that the dog looks alert Some of this excess brown that was hanging off, I decided just to incorporate into the next ear that I'm making, just to not waste it. 
and again I'm just gonna try to make a similar shape so I compare it to my first ear and now I'm just gonna try to replicate that so that I have two ears to work with It is useful to have this other little piece of foam to sort of sandwich the felt so I don't have to have it poking into my fingers. You wouldn't have to have that exact item. You could probably find something else that's soft enough not to break your needle but firm enough to hold the wool in place. I'm going to start attaching the ear and I'm going to start on the inner portion, so on the top of the head trying to basically align it with the inner portion of the eye in terms of width where it is on the top of the head. I know this is not in view very well at this point. The outer portion will be lower and a little bit further back than the inner portion of the ear. So that the top inner portion is a little more forward than the back outer portion. And as I attach it, I'm also going to be working on creating the fold in the ear. In the middle of this ear, I'm going to have it be just slightly lower so that the two edges, the outer and the inner edge, are a little bit higher so that it looks a little bit like there's weight to the ear. In case that's not entirely clear, here's the finished dog and you can kind of see a little dip in the top part of the ear. When I go to attach the second ear, I'm just checking to make sure that the fold length was the same as the first ear. And the tips of the ear are going to point outward. So they don't fold perfectly straight forward on the face. They are pointed a little bit outward. And as I get ready to attach the second ear, I'm gonna just double check where I want the fold to be and get it started on the felting pad just to make sure I know where I'm gonna have the fold. And then I will get it attached. It's important to make sure I attach it the same distance back from the eye and the same distance in toward the center of the head. So I just do a lot of checking and looking at it from different angles and it's kind of a slow process with the ears as well. There's a, you just want to keep looking and make sure that it's coming out the way that your reference looks.
Here I'm actually pushing the brow a little bit more forward, so this isn't the ear that I'm felting into at the moment. And as I get the ears in their more final position, I will even felt through the top into the head so that it's very secure, so the ear won't really be liftable, but it'll be more permanently in place. I'm giving the very tips of the ear a slight curl upward. Here I'm just working on its brows a little bit more, making sure that they're raised up above the eyes in the inner portion. And then on the right eye, I decide to add a little bit more wool on the underneath. There should be enough wool above and below the eye that, again, the eye looks more like it's set in a socket rather than just floating on top of the face. I decide to push this right brow quite a bit more forward, so I'm just felting at an angle forward so that it pushes the wool more forward. And then I'm gonna just keep building up some wool around both eyes just to make sure that they're more set in the face. I'm going to add some more of the dark brown to outline the eye because some of it was kind of getting lost as I kept building up the underneath of the eye with the lighter brown. So you just want to keep looking at the eyes and make sure that you have all of the definition that you want.
Here I'm adding a little bit more brown back to the brow where the white was showing through. And now I'm adding a little bit more black just to finish the color pattern of this specific dog. So I'm just looking at my reference and filling in the colors. I'm working on the shape of the nose now. So I'm gonna create a line down the center just by felting and create that crease. And I'm also gonna work on the nostrils by felting inward, making two deep indents. And then I noticed that the front right paw has a little bit of black still showing through. So I took a little more white wool and just covered that. And as I'm finishing up this dog, just any part of the dog that I feel like needs a little bit of adjustment, I'm just gonna keep working on wherever it seems like needs it. Just tighten up the wool in the tail, any other little places that just seem like they need some adjustment. Here I'm just adding a little more definition to the bend in the front paw. And just working on tightening up the felting in the back toes. Next I'm gonna take a reverse felting needle and I'm gonna pull some of the wool out so that it kind of has a little bit of a wiry fur around the eyes and around the muzzle. So I'm just pulling some of that fur out and then I will trim it to be the correct length. This particular dog doesn't have a lot of the wiry fur. It's mostly smooth coated, but there's a little bit around her face that is a little bit more furry. So I'm just trying to put those accents in. And also the reverse felting sort of softens the, the look of the face. I'm taking the regular needle and I'm just making sure that there's a little indent in between the eyes on the forehead. And then I'm gonna tighten up the top part of the muzzle to make sure it's narrow at the top portion. I'm continuing to do the reverse felting here. And if you look at the tops of the ears right now, you can see there's a little bit of dark showing that wasn't there before. I took a uh, marker with India ink and added some dark accents to the tops of the ears, but I was holding it completely out of view of the camera, so it was pointless. <laughs> For, but I will put a link um, in the description to that marker and it's just you just lightly add a little bit of color if you want to um, just to darken the ears a little bit
I did add a little bit more white wool to this paw where I felt like the dark was showing through and I'm just kind of looking the dog over entirely to see if there's any other areas that just need a little bit of touch-ups or adjustments. And then I'm taking the reverse needle and just adding some more sort of furry details to just help give it the appearance of fur. And then here I realized that the dew claw on the front left foot, it just wasn't pronounced enough. And so I'm adding a little bit more white wool on top of that little black pad so that it, it looks more like it's got an actual toe there instead of just the little pad. Next, I'm going to cover the nose in Mod Podge. This is Mod Podge Matte, so it's not gonna be super shiny, but it will give the nose the look of being a different material than the rest of it, like than the wool, so that the nose doesn't look like it's also made of fur. But if possible, try to leave the nostrils so that they don't have any Mod Podge, and that will give them more of a look of a shadow, like there, there's an actual cavity there in the nasal passage. And that's pretty much it. This dog is basically finished. These are the last touch-ups that I do. I'm just tightening up this ear. You'll see me do some trimming, a little bit of reverse felting on the side of the belly, anywhere that I felt like maybe there was lines or obvious, you know, felting holes stripes, anything that you don't really like to see in the wool, you can use the reverse felting needle to finish up those, smoothing out those little details. And then you just let the Mod Podge dry and you can, if, if you need to, you can sand the nose if there's anything that's uneven or trim it when the Mod Podge is dry. And that's it. I hope this video has been useful. And I wish you the very best in all of your needle felting projects. I'm gonna go ahead and include pictures of the finished Jack Russell Terrier from various angles in case it's helpful to refer to if you're trying to base your sculpture on this exact one.